Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Conversations with Gojas podcast. It's me, Kevin, and I've already been having a delightful conversation and a very contentful conversation with Steve Feld, biz coach Steve. You might remember him from our first episode. Uh, let me reacquaint you. Uh, Steve is a certified business coach, author, podcast host, professional speaker, coffee enthusiast, which we talked about last time, and award-winning business management executive. He's passionate about growth, efficient operations, and long-term success. He has owned and operated seven businesses and written seven books. Steve has been coaching and consulting for decades, going all the way back to the ancient days before the dot-com bubble. I remember us joking about that last time. Um, he has developed frameworks for every level of business and excels at facilitating those light bulb moments for his clients. His strongest passion is in helping the owner operator, the entrepreneur who is TikTok never off the clock. <laughs> Steve, welcome back. It's really, it's really good to see you again. <laughs> well, thanks for having me back, Kevin. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about your 2023. We are, as of this recording, we're about three and a half weeks deep already, and it feels like it could have been three and a half hours. It's been flying by. So tell me about your new year so far, and tell me about the year to come. Oh, great. Yeah, I've now written eight books, so we just launched the seventh one this month. Yay. All right. <laughs> and getting ready to do another strategic planning workshop for those business owners who think, I don't need to do any planning, and then they wonder why they struggle all year. <laughs> we help them do a strategic plan and let's see what else. I know. Oh, starting a new mastermind group in February. So we are filling that up as we are talking right now. My goodness. That's so basically standard operating procedure for you. You were, you were busy and happy and just going all over the place in all the right ways and had all this momentum. Last time we talked, it's lovely to see that that has not changed at all. And in fact, only gotten even better. <laughs> uh, I'm, you know, that's where my passion lies, helping these owner operators build that long-term sustainable business. And I'm not, I'm relentless on it. It's like, let's turn around that failure rate for small business owners. Let's get them succeeding. I like that. I like that term relentless. It's, we talk about, like, you hear passion a lot, but, and everybody I talk to here, I mean, most entrepreneurs, small business owners, coaches, you're all like, there, there's a foundation of passion and a desire to serve and give back and to help and to, and to grow. But relentlessness is not a virtue you hear often spoken of directly like that. And I feel like that, that's a, that's a good one. That's what, that's one, uh, it's like, like alignment, fit, you know, service oriented leadership, relentlessness. I like that. That's good. It, it's, you know, the Napoleon Hill, that, you know, red hot burning desire kind of theory. It, it's, and I just had this conversation with a, a business owner yesterday. I'm like, what is that one red hot burning thing that you want in your business? And they couldn't nail it. And it's like, well, that's why your business isn't moving because you don't know what you're passionate about, what you're excited about every day to help people, help your customers, your clients. And they're like, oh my gosh. And it's, you say it like that. And it's, 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 it, it sounds like, oh, duh, of course. Yeah. But before you get to that, oh, duh, of course moment, it can be a painful and frustrating mystery. Yeah. I mean, I've had my coach going, what are you most passionate about? And this is years and years ago. And I'm like, I did the, uh, and they go, well, until you figure that out, nothing's going to work in your business. Nothing. And it's so, it's, it's so important to identify it as a, a, a stymieing point, a roadblock. And we, we were talking about this in sort of a different context with social media before, where you really have to start with what you're like, what, what's your, what's your purpose? What are you doing this for? What, what's the result you want to see? And it's, it's a very similar, like a cousin question, a parallel question to what are you, what are you red hot desirous for? Just passionate about all the way down in your bones that you wake up in the morning and you just start like vibrating with the excitement of it all, you know? And that's, it's, it's, a guiding question. It's also a clarifying question. Yeah, and right. yeah. And when you don't have that answer, like, and again, the words might change yeah. where it comes from in your body might change. Some days it might be from your gut, some days from your heart, some days from your head, but that answer is going to come immediately. And if it doesn't, if it's, if it's encountering obstacles or it's getting some friction, that's where to put your attention because there's something there that needs to be dealt with. Yeah. I mean, I met an HVAC guy <laughs> December and he's like, well, you know, it's that time of year. No one really wants me. I'm like, I think we're looking at this wrong. Aren't you doing preventive maintenance and everything? And he's, he didn't have that in his business. So we started talking about that. I go, what, what's your burning desire? And he's like, oh, that's simple. He goes, I want to make people comfortable within their homes. Hmm. That's like, lovely. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, simple. And yeah. that's his whole passion. He goes, when I hear someone going, 
in the middle of August and it's 115 out and their AC went down, mm. I take that personally that I got to help them. Jeez, you put it like that. And I'm like, I want to be, I want to hire this guy for something. I don't even need any work done. Yeah. I was like, this, this is the, that's exactly the kind of person I want to work with. Yeah, exactly. Cause that's their desire. It's like, now I'm trying to get them out of the truck because <laughs> you can't grow your business by you being in the truck and doing all the work. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I, I think that's the, uh, the magic word, the S word scaling, oh. scaling, it's scaling beyond your own personal 24, seven, 365. That's even even the even the best and the brightest and the most passionate can can stumble on that. It could be tough to figure out how to how to amplify your efforts and your work and your impact without, I mean, burning your candle at all possible ends. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I mean, one of my businesses, I woke up with the reality that I can only take on this many clients at a time. That's it. Ooh, two. And I just had this sinking feeling. I'm capped on income. I'm tapped on everything. I'm capped. I'm stuck in my mm-hmm. own bubble. And I said, you know what? Enough of that. (laughs) I finished my projects, closed that business, opened up a new one where I can scale. And now I have the ability to scale. I have coaches underneath me, I have books, automated programs. It's just like scale, 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 because that's building a business that I can hopefully sell one day. Whereas Mm -hmm. when I can only take on this many clients, I cannot sell that business. And I know for some people, I, at least in my experience, talking to some people, scale can be a little bit of a dirty word because yeah. they feel like they feel like it goes hand in hand with dilution, with with a lessening, with a spreading out too thin, or losing touch with what they're passionate about. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose control of my business. Uh, control. That's yeah, number secret. one. I mean, like, no, I'm a <laughs> micromanager. I gotta have my fingers in the pie. <laughs> but scaling, it's really scaling is more about like that amplification, that expansion. It's actually you think about. Anything that's living, anything that's healthy is growing. It's not necessarily growing just to grow. It's not like a cancer, but it is growing. It's developing. And so when you feel that cap, and I love the way that you like you put your hand up. Like when I when I when I'm thinking in terms of a cap, I can almost feel like I put my hand up here. I'm like feeling the ceiling kind of touching the top of my head and how uncomfortable that is when you're in a space that can't grow with you. I felt like someone took a glass and put it over me, like you do on a bug on a bar. Yeah what it felt like because I could feel the I could see everything around me but I couldn't get out of it and it was like I really felt I could feel the top I could feel the sides and I'm like I'm stuck and uh, this is I can't move of this business forward doing this even if I brought on another person I'm still going to be capped And I realized that because I have to get involved so much because it was consulting. Hmm. And then it's like, wait a minute, let's switch it over. What am I doing more, more coaching or more consulting? So I started really analyzing that. And it's like, well, it's kind of close, but why don't build a coaching business that can have the consulting aspect to it, but I can scale. And that's when I, okay, shut this thing down and let's rebrand, refocus, bring in some new tools bring in the right people and switch coaches and <laughs> I, you, you say that jokingly but that's also like i was, I was in I my mean. head i was like this is the moment where i have to blow smoke up steve's butt because you are this is exactly why a coach like you it can can be so valuable and can be so crucial it's like you need someone it's hard to see that for yourself oh, was, almost impossible yeah. to see that for yourself and then to chart your course out a coach like you you're uniquely positioned, powerfully positioned to come in with that, like right alongside, just like shouldered up, be like, you, you see all this, right? right? You do. You know what to do? Because I do. And, you, yeah. and then it's just, it's possibility and potential from there. Exactly. And, you know, that was one of the things when I was looking, okay, what do I have to break down? And that's when I said, I'm going to have to rebuild a whole new company. I can't do everything. I can't just switch. And I started looking at my coach. Are they going to grow with me in this new model, with my new mindset, with my new focus? And I realized they're not. Hmm. They were great for what they did. I applaud them and I respect them and thank them. But it's like, I'm time to find a different kind of coach. So I found someone who was a little bit more hard, more abrupt, a little Hmm. bit more sandpapery, if you will. But they never lied never deceived, honest all day. They care more about probably me than they care about themselves. 
because they want the best out of their clients. And I checked them out. And when I brought them on, I'm like, you know, here's a coach who's going to push me just like, I mean, Phil Jackson pushed Michael Jordan. It's, he, they were not exactly, you know, it wasn't like oil on ice here. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what made the team better and Michael Jacks, Michael Jordan better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, endless, endless encouragement can be, can be damaging. And yeah, you, quite hey. frankly, you need to be challenged, especially yeah. by someone who understands the value of it and can see exactly where that challenge needs to happen. Challenge for its own sake can be as dangerous or useless as praise for its own sake. Yeah, I totally agree. You need someone who can, who sees more in you than you see in yourself at that moment. Definitely. And they push you towards you being better in such a great way. So they're not there for the monetary gain, a piece of your company and all that. They're not there for that. They're there to see you succeed and become the person you want to be. All right. I, I can talk to you all day and I knew this would happen, but I, we both have harder outs. But before I do let you go, I want to make sure, I mean, you, you teased book number eight, you teased an upcoming mastermind. Um, if I remember correctly, Biz Coach Steve is still the, is still the website. Talk about where people can find out more about the book, the mastermind, everything else you're doing, and just more about you in general. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm on social media. <laughs> uh, primarily LinkedIn and Facebook. So I've been promoting the books there. I've been giving away the book all month to all my contacts and say, hey, get a free copy. I mean, take it for free before Amazon starts, you know, kicking in <laughs> and wanting to charge for it. <laughs> so I'm waiting for that. That should be February. And then the mastermind group, I'm definitely looking for a few more. I still have a few more spots open up for entrepreneurs and they can connect through me through Facebook and I'm Biz Coach Steve or Steve Feld. You can find me both ways on Facebook and LinkedIn, Steve Feld. Love it. Facebook, LinkedIn, website, uh, unho the holy, holy trinity? No, not quite. <laughs> you know, you know, it's where you are. About that. You know, it's the trinity for your business. Don't be on a million platforms. Be on the ones that you can manage, control and where your peeps are. That's right. Where your peeps are. That's a, <laughs> it's a little too cute for an episode title, but quite frankly, okay, I like uh, it. <laughs> okay, where your tribe is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, thank you. Thank you. We'll scratch. We'll scratch people out and replace tribe. Thank you for coming back on. I, like I said, like I threatened, I, I totally just have you back on in the summer. Maybe have you back on in like you know April, May, June, and we'll just connect again. Maybe when we have a little bit more time to to ramble and explore our various stories and analogies and experiences. Because I just I love where our conversations go. The good get, gets gets right to the meat of things so quickly because we're both so passionate yeah. about it. Quite frankly, <laughs> that's it. It's like hey, let's help people and get them the results they want. If you got in business for a reason, then let's help you get to that goal. I love it. Well, I'm going to help you get to your next meeting. <laughs> Steve, thank you so much for coming back on. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Kevin. And good luck, everyone. And everyone, you know, you know, Biz Coach Steve, listen to that. Our previous episode it was fantastic. Check him out. You, you can, you can, you can pick up what he's putting down. You can tell what he's all about and you're going to want to be a part of it. So anyway, find him where you can find him, as we said, and we'll talk to you again here very soon.